So let us uh, begin our uh, Monday morning routine. And let us begin by placing our awareness in the area of the heart and take slow, deep breaths. Visualize these flowing in and out of your heart. Breathing a little slower, a little gentler than you normally would. And just bring it to a slow, rhythmic movement in your body. Take those slow, deep breaths and just visualize them flowing in and out of your heart, breathing a little slower, a little gentler than you normally would. And feel the rhythm of your body as you do that. Visualize these flowing in and out of your heart. And when you do that, you are actually interrupting the subconscious mind, the subconscious body, and saying, pay attention. I want to be present. I want to chart my own course by simply placing awareness in the area of the heart and being aware while you take slow deep breaths and visualize these flowing in and out of your heart, you are interrupting your body. You are alerting your body and stopping all the subconscious programming that is happening that you're not aware of. This is the first step in reprogramming your body to respond differently if that is what you wish but you'll be consciously creating your reality. The step one is just to interrupt your body so that you don't replay old programming again. So let us do this together. Let us place our awareness in the area of the heart and just take slow, deep breaths. Visualize these flowing in and out of our hearts, breathing a little slower little gentler than we normally would. Notice if your shoulders are moving up and down. If they are, be gentle on yourself. Just take the slow deep breaths as deep as you can without your shoulders moving up and down. Excellent. Thank you so much. It's now time for the I didn't know that moment. And today's topic is all about, well, it's all about me, actually. It's catching yourself creating an unwanted reality. Now, 
a couple of weeks ago, I got into a, uh, an unwanted discussion. Let's just say that it was a bit of a heated discussion. I was triggered with an individual. And, uh, you know, it lasted, uh, you know, basically the, the, I was triggered right away. I was able to manage my, my, uh, uh, my words properly. Uh, I've been doing this for a while, so I knew how to, how to frame uh, what I was feeling in a way that was not disrespectful. However, I was triggered. And uh, the other person knew I was triggered uh, because the words I used were very stern but very respectful. And then when we parted, uh, I still started thinking about what was going on. The, the, the conversation hadn't ended in my mind. And I was having this conversation in my mind, uh, still arguing with this person. And all the things that came to my mind was, you know, I really should have said this, this and that. And that would have really, uh, you know, driven the point home even better than what I did because I had to think on my feet. And I would continue on this and then I would stop myself. I would say, hang on a second, what's going on here? Why am I, uh, why am I talking like this about this person? So I would stop myself and I would shift my thoughts to something more pleasant about you know, uh, my future and, and where I was going and I started feeling good about that. And then when I kind of, uh, I kind of uh, let my mind go into this automatic uh, kind of processing, uh, it was, I was well into the conversation again uh, about how I would, you know, checkmate her. In other words, how I would corner her and make sure that she completely understood why she was offside on this conversation before I caught myself again. And I said, wait a minute, why am I replaying these things of the past? What is going on here? And so I would interrupt that by doing the breathing technique. And then I would start thinking about the future. And this went on and on and on for days uh, that I would, I would catch myself actually reflecting on a past emotion and playing out that, that part and creating stress in my body. And because I've, I've trained myself to kind of interrupt my body uh, by taking these slow deep breaths and just visualizing this going into my heart, I become more present. And when I become more present, I realize that when I'm playing these memories, uh, I'm actually re-experiencing that trigger and I am actually programming my body to get used to that trigger. So my subconscious mind that is automatically playing this without my conscious mind being aware, and when I become aware that I'm actually having these, these conversations in my mind, uh, that is not triggered, that is not activated by me, my conscious mind, it just comes up to play this, I realize that I've actually programmed my body to replay this situation. And it's only through interrupting them that I can stay more present. So my question to you is when you are having a, 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 a moment that you can take these slow deep breaths and just visualize these flowing in and out of your heart, just like we did a second ago. Does that get you present? And then do you catch yourself with all these thoughts at that time saying, wait a minute, these thoughts are playing in my mind and I'm thinking about the past or I'm thinking about a fantasy of the future, but I'm not being present with myself and I'm not actually creating from this point of present. And the, the amount of energy we waste in playing the tapes of the past or fantasizing some future that is not really emotionally uh, palatable for us is really draining a lot of energy from us. We're becoming sicker by doing that. So this week, uh, if I could uh, invite you to perhaps interrupt your thinking process. And every time you catch yourself thinking about some past that is not feeling good in your heart or some future that gives you some stress because it's a future that you don't want, know that you're always creating. It's what you want to create. And in order for you to create whatever you want, you need to bring yourself into the present. And from, from that point of present, uh, being present, uh, all possibilities open up to you. Just one closing word before uh, I'll take a minute here to share with you uh, some physics. So when scientists actually try and look for an electron 
uh, with an electron microscope and they go down into that, that I individual atom, what they will notice is that whenever they anticipate looking for an electron, an electron will show up. And then when they're not looking, it'll disappear. So it's only when they are observing light that the light turns, in from, turns into a particle from waves. That means it's, all possibilities are happening at that point in time. But as soon as you give your thought to that, that particular possibility manifests itself into a denser form, which means you are always creating with your thoughts. I'll leave you with that thought. We can expand upon that another time. All right, so let us begin to uh, bring our awareness in the area of the heart. Take this one level deeper and just take slow, deep breaths and visualize these flowing in and out of your heart, breathing a little slower, a little deeper than you normally would. Slow, deep breaths. And now time to activate a regenerative emotion. Let us do this together. Let us activate a regenerative emotion. Is it compassion that you're feeling? Is it gratitude? Is it appreciation? Whatever it is. Bring it forward and feel it in your heart. And when you're this present, when you're present right here, right now, with all of us together, there are infinite amount of possibilities open to you. from this point, as long as you're not thinking in the past or as long as you're not living in the future with an unwanted dream or reality or consequence and you're just being present right now, taking slow deep breaths, visualizing these flowing in and out of your heart, breathing a little slower, a little gentler than you normally would and then experiencing a regenerative emotion and maintaining the present state, staying in the present. And now all possibilities are open to you. Every one of them. The moment you put your thought to any particular outcome that begins to materialize in front of you, just like the electron, that when the scientists started looking for the electron in the atom, it showed up. It showed up where they wanted it to show up. That is the, the quantumness of your being. You can create from this present moment whatever you want. Interrupt your thinking, interrupt everything in your body because your body is beaming. Every cell in your body is broadcasting. We're interrupting the broadcasting that we don't want to have and we are now rewriting the program as you take these slow deep breaths. Visualize them flowing in and out of your heart. Breathing a little slower, a little gentler than you normally would and experiencing a regenerative emotion. Slow deep breaths. Breathing a little slower, a little gentler than you normally would and experiencing a regenerative emotion. Beautiful. And as you spend more time experiencing these emotions, you will find yourself automatically activating these emotions. Thank you so much for participating today. I wanted to thank you for uh, this wonderful time that we've spent together. And uh, I just uh, if you need to leave, by all means, uh, thank you so much. 
if you want to stick around for a few more uh, minutes and uh, and I can answer some of your questions I'm happy to do that I see there's a couple of comments let me just uh, put that uh, see if I can read it for you here so we have a uh, uh, sue saying hello good afternoon from the UK thank you for joining us sue sue uh, further states how do scientists know there is no electron or particle when they're not observing it's a very good question sue what they have is uh, they, ha they have actually created uh, a way. This was, this was actually done in the 40s where they talked about whether, whether these, uh, uh, the light, whether lights, light behaves as a particle or a wave. And they did a double slit experiment. And uh, wh even when the, uh, what, what they did was somehow when they're, they're, they were able to record um, an, a, a process in the experiment, but they were able to uh, leave the room any evidence that was happening in that thing was being uh, recorded secondarily. So it was a secondary recording, which means that it wasn't directly being observed, but it was being recorded. And in that way, when they weren't observing and we came back to see the evidence, they saw the evidence of the electron being in the position in a particular uh, uh, level, of, uh, level of the atom. And, and then it, how it disappeared. So it came in and disappeared. And how it never appeared when they were not observing it. But when they actually began to observe it, it appeared. So they, they actually saw the evidence of the electron actually materializing and not materializing uh, by, by, by uh, what, looking at the evidence after the fact. All right? Good question, though. Good question. Um, uh, Michelle has uh, asked, uh, or stated, as you said, I found out I cannot mind chatting when doing your breathing technique. Right. So um, I think I th if I understand it, you correctly, is that uh, when you do the breathing technique, the chatting kind of, uh, you can actually interrupt that chatting process. Now, interrupting the chatting process does not mean it goes away. It just means that you actually consciously are aware that the chatting is taking place. The more difficult situation and, and I'll say difficult because it's been difficult for me. It may be easier for you, but for, for me it was difficult is that I'm actually seeing these thought patterns and these conversations play out from the past. And then I'm asking myself, I'm really enjoying this conversation because I'm winning at this argument in my mind. Of course I'm winning at this argument in my mind. My ego won't let me lose. So in my mind, this argument is on a win winning streak. I'm really you know, sticking it to them. So do I want to interrupt this? That's when I realized I'm actually addicted. I'm ad addicted to these emotions. And it's very interesting. When I say I'm addicted to these emotions, addicted means that this, these are the natural patterns, the natural grooves that have been, uh, been uh, etched into my, my, my psyche, my body. And my body is saying, I don't like change. Or when you have change, it is uncomfortable. It's like you know you're sitting in a hot tub for for a few few minutes. Your body gets used to the temperature. When you get out, it becomes uncomfortable for a brief moment until it gets back to normal. Well, what I'm trying to do here is as soon as I interrupt this unwanted thought patterns, it's like me getting out of the hot tub and me saying, "Oh, is this cold? I should get back in." Or I would say, no, this is, this is cold, but it's good for me. I'm just going to stick it out. I'm going to stop the interruption. I'm going to do something different. When you actually interrupt this thinking process and you do something different and you think about the future in a pleasant way or you think, stay present and say, ah, I'm just going to start now projecting what I want to feel like uh, right now. You know, if I want to uh, achieve something in life, I am going to experience a feeling of what that achievement is right now in this moment. And when you do that, you interrupt the past. You actually reprogram your body to feel this way. And then this will be the comfortable way. Replaying emotions of the past will become uncomfortable. That's really where we want to switch. So this is nothing but practice and reprogramming your body. Your body is very elastic. It's called neuroplasticity. That's how you reprogram your body. Okay, so it's simpler than, than uh, you know, in, in concept, tougher to do. It's like staying out of the hot tub and not wanting to go back in. All right. Thank you so much for your comments and for this engaging uh, conversation. If there's any more uh, thoughts, uh, bring it out. I see one more coming in. Michelle saying, yes, you are right. That is what I did every day to, to be aware uh, that I'm doing my mind chatting. You will see a huge difference. You will experience a huge difference, Michelle. And everyone that experiences this, 
is if you stop your mind chatter that's causing you to feel unwanted feelings that's really what it is. If your mind chatter is causing unwanted feelings, you are actually, uh, it, it, and if it's coming up and you, and you don't trigger it, like, it's not like you're going to sit down and say, okay, now I'm going to start thinking about this particular thing. It just automatically creeps up on you. And then it's only when you interrupt your body that it shows up. And, and, and that's when you say, whoa, hang on a second, let me stop this. Okay, so interrupt your body all the time doing this breathing technique. And when you do that, perfect you are on your way to actually reprogramming your body and you will sh see a measurable shift in your in your system all right